With us now on Live It Up is Dr. Kevin Tarani, and we're going to be talking about aesthetic plastic surgery. Welcome to the show, Doctor. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is so lovely. I am so impressed. We are here at Aristocrat Plastic Surgery. How did you come up with that name? So it's actually a pretty funny story. Uh, it was the name of my favorite dealership in Kansas City where I did my uh, fellowship in plastic surgery. They were so great with customer care, so lovely taking care of a measly resident, which is what I was when I was there. I was so thralled by their service. I actually asked if I could use their name for my corporation, and I did. That's wonderful. Now, yes. do you still send them like holiday cards and stuff? Do you keep in touch Can't with them? Can't say I have. Okay, maybe, maybe this <laughs> year then, when they see this, maybe. they'll be like, hey, yes. Dr. Kevin. Yes. Um, you are known uh, basically for being the foremost authority, or at least one of the best in the world, at doing a mommy makeover. How did that come about? Thank you. That's, uh, that's quite an honor to be known as that. One of the uh, things that I love to do is basically recreating or creating the body in its best form that it can be. And uh, the uh, female body before or certainly uh, after pregnancy can be quite a bit of a change. I started with uh, training with one of the best in abdominal contouring or tummy tuck procedures called Dr. Lockwood, who I trained with in Kansas City. And from there, it took on a form of its own where I was really sculpting the abdomen and really was able to recreate breast shapes. And word of mouth got out and a uh, few celebrities and it worked out uh, well and uh, made it happen. Do you consider yourself both a surgeon and an artist? Definitely. Uh, this is something that uh, it's more almost obviously form and function and safety and all of that comes first. Uh, but one of, the, one of the reasons people are coming to me and one of the reasons to be a plastic surgeon is because we're creating something that's youthful, better looking for patients to feel good about themselves. It's like a piece of art. When you look in the mirror, you feel good about it. When you look at a piece of art, you, you feel good about it. And that's what it's about. Now, I've seen some of the sculptures that you've done. At, at what age, at, at an early age, did you do like an art project that, uh, that you still have in your home today? And if so, what was that Play-Doh that you were like sculpting? <laughs> Play-Doh was definitely one of my favorite things to do, unbeknownst to me what, what it's going to take me. Uh -huh. uh, having said that, I actually formally was never trained in artistry. It's something I really love to do with my, my hands. I always like to build things. Uh, it wasn't actually until residency where I actually took a sculpting class. And the very first sculpting class I ever took, I was amazed myself that I could do what I did. Okay. So it wasn't anything that it's kind of was in a way inherent. Um, but obviously, it's something that you still need to study. The, the, the magical proportions and, you know, it's something that Da Vinci started uh, and uh, it continues till now, and a lot of those mainstays translate into human form and what we do in the operating room or even outside with injectables. Speaking of injectables, one of the things that we talked about uh, before we started this interview was that my, my fear of it, mm. you know? I, I, I'm afraid, you know, I've had it done once, um, and then I, I'm kind of concerned about what's inside, what the chemicals are, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But you made a very good point. You said it's not just having a, the quality of the ingredients, but it's also having an expert quality injector and, doing an extra, it. Right. right. So how, how can somebody go about that, about uh, maybe coming here, making a consultation, mm -hmm. kind of putting their mind at ease? Like, how could you walk through some of that? I think uh, the first step of kind of going through it is always best done with a friend or, or, a, or a colleague, somebody you, like, you kind of trust with or, or, or a family member uh, that has had it done. When you had that personal connection, then you can see what it's like. And okay. a lot of times we could do that because I, I think of my staff and our office as a, as a family. Okay. And pretty much everyone, including myself, have had injectables or other forms of uh, plastic surgery. Um, so a lot of times we actually get them to see what it's like. One of the most common myths about, say, Botox is that you have a frozen look, that you're no longer yeah, you're moving like, and, and, and you're you afraid. look freaky. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is the majority of the people that have good Botox, you won't even know it because ah. it's good. Okay. The ones that are bad are the ones you're noticing and those are the ones that you want to stay away from. But... Uh, so we show them those natural lines. Like I have Botox on my forehead. I have full animation. I you can, do. I can, I can move. It's all okay. about doing it small doses, doing it in the right area, and uh, kind of keeping up with it. And most people kind of take that first 
a plunge and I call them Botox virgins that they basically come in. That's the first thing that they have done. And then it slowly graduates to some smaller fillers or some skincare. And that's usually the, kind of their introduction. And they can see how these smaller improvements really help. It does, and absolutely. Like, you know, building confidence or, you know, if you've got a business or if you're uh, somebody that's gone through a divorce, there's many different reasons why you might just want a little assistance in helping you with, you know, your looks. Absolutely, absolutely. I And I, I sometimes liken it to patients uh, having their hair done or their nails done. It's something that you feel good about yourself. It's obviously not the same level. There are complications that can happen with injections. If you do it right, it shouldn't. It's obviously not the same level, sterility, expert injector, doing the right products. But in, in way of life or the way you actually think about it in the back of your mind, it actually is similar in, in how it affects you, makes you feel better about yourself, and self-improvement in small little steps. You also do some other non-invasive things, like you have different suites. As I was walking yes. through your practice, you know, there's cool sculpting. There's like, it seems to me like you have different opportunities for uh, different clients. Right, and uh, it, it basically spans the spectrum of uh, age, men, women, uh, gender. Uh, it, it, we try to be the go-to place for all your aesthetic needs. So if you feel that you want to start with something that's very non-invasive, non you mentioned cool sculpting, for example. It's for somebody who wants zero downtime, has a little bit of a bulge that wants to go away, they don't want surgery, and most people don't want surgery, and we're not gonna jump into surgery right away. Right. So you will get that kind of an improvement. Then you may want to say, hey, listen, I, I have this, but I may actually want a lot more improvement, in which case that's when we, when we introduce things like liposuction, which is still much smaller surgery. At the same time, it's much more dramatic in terms of a result. And speaking of uh, breast augmentation, um, you do some procedures right through the belly button. I do. Right through the navel, I should I say. Do. <laughs> well, same idea. Anyway. But <laughs> we, uh, I'm one of the uh, few uh, surgeons in the country that, that places implants through the belly button. Okay. Uh, for patients that are scar averse, one of, one of the first things that people worry about when you talk about breast augmentation or any surgery for that matter is how there's gonna be scarring involved, whether or not that's gonna be a telltale sign of the hat surgery. And with this procedure, you basically don't have that. You forego any scarring on the breast or anywhere in the body. It's just literally on the inside of the, of the belly button. And for those that do need um, operation or elect to, mm -hmm. um, you're, Operating suite is beautiful. Thank you. Everything here, doctor, is so pristine clean. It's so well designed. When I walked in, I just, it's a feeling of <sighs> like a nice deep breath, which was completely what I, was, I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. You know, you. Um, so I want to compliment you on the practice that you've created and what you've put in and the equipment that you have, the knowledge that you have. It makes me feel, like I said, before coming to even talking to you about it, I was like, I'm a little afraid, but <laughs> you know, I think now I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. And what would be a good first step for someone uh, to, to learn about your practice? They could just call and make a consultation? Call, make a consultation to come in for a consult. They'll meet with one of my coordinators, of course, eventually with me. Uh, twice a year, we actually do our flings. In spring and summer, we do oh. a fling that's very informal for okay. exactly that reason. Okay. Because patients just want to come in, enjoy themselves, and we, we, we have uh, get-togethers both here in my city office, and uh, it's completely informal for exactly that kind of an icebreaker for them to see what we actually do here and actually meet a lot of our other patients that have had procedures done that don't look overdone and look very natural and are happy to share it. Wonderful. And yeah. you have, I mean, dancing music and like a little <laughs> snack or anything. We, ha we have all sorts of different <laughs> themes. This past one actually was a Kentucky Derby uh, theme. Fun. Uh, we all wore hats and... And, uh, and had drinks, it was fun. And how are you at sculpting balloon animals? Right, not do you know how to, I'm pretty good at that. Are you really? I could teach you how to do good. that. That was one of my first jobs. <laughs> I was doing magic tricks and doing balloon animals. That's so. pretty amazing. Dr. Tarani, thank you very much for joining us here. Truly appreciate it. Thank you I'm so much. I'm looking forward to like coming in and I'm gonna to come to one of the spring flings. Perfect, look forward to I that. Will. Okay. Well, thanks for watching Live It Up. We hope you enjoyed our visit here at Aristocrat Plastic Surgery. Thank you.